Hi, everybody. Um, we are back with uh, solving equations. This time it's going to be IXL Algebra 1. Uh, this is the J5 section, which says solve advanced linear equations. Basically, uh, they're just having you do uh, simplifying one side of your equation and then solving using your regular uh, do the opposite to both sides in reverse order. Now the problem here is that I have two different S's. I have 11S and I have minus 4S. And if I don't do or simplify that expression, I can't do the problem because there's you know, two variable S's in the problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to simplify one side of my equation. Now occasionally you're gonna to have to simplify both sides of your equation separately, then do your solving steps. I'm literally simplifying 11s minus 4s. Take 11 sandwiches and take away four sandwiches and you have seven sandwiches. Minus two is equal to 19. All I did was simplify that piece. I took 11s's, take away 4s, and you have 7s. Now I have a two-step uh, linear equation and I always do the same thing. I always do the opposite to both sides in reverse order. I'm going to add two to both sides in order to undo the last step. These cancel each other out. If you like to think of it, negative two plus two is zero. And if I add seven S plus zero, I still have just seven S. 19 plus two is 21. And now I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by seven. Remember if there's uh, multiplication is your assumed uh, or your default operation. So seven S means seven times S. Uh, I'm gonna do the opposite to both sides, which is divide by seven. I don't like to use the division symbol. I like to use the vinculum or the division line. Seven divided by seven is one and one S is S. 21 divided by seven is three, and you finish the problem. But before you ever start, we simplify. So uh, S is three. Man, it's giving me problems here. Hang on just a second, let me see if I can get this. Okay. There it is. S is equal to three. Sorry about that. I had little issues with my accepting my answer there. All right, so it should work from now on. Now this time we have eight T take away two T's is six T. We're gonna simplify one side. And this time we only have a single step equation. Divide by six on both sides of the equation. And we have, and these are ones by the way, T, one T is equal to two. So two, you have to remember to set that up beginning. Now, this one is interesting. There are literally two ways to go with this equation. Um, there's the straightforward way of doing the opposite to both sides in reverse order, which you can do if U is by itself. In other words, I could divide by four on both sides and then subtract one. So I could do this. I have four times u plus one is equal to 16. And I could divide by four on both sides. And I then have u plus one is equal to 16 divided by four is four. And then I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. That is absolutely not wrong. Perfectly acceptable method for this and you get u equals three. Now, if you had not noticed that you could do that, you could have distributed this four to both parts. Four times the, the value u plus one is four u plus four. All I'm doing is using the distributive property of multiplication over addition, and I get four u plus four is equal to 16. I subtract four from both sides. Follow 
reverse order of operations. We're solving 16 minus four is 12 and we divide by four. And sure enough, as expected, we get the right answer, u is equal to three. Either method is fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, notice that I had one extra step in this case. I only had two steps here, but I had three in this one. Not that big of a difference. Now we're going to have to simplify our 9n plus negative 17n, which leaves us with negative 8n plus negative 15 is equal to 9. Uh, I need to do the opposite to both sides now. I need to add 15 to both sides. And we get negative 8n is equal to 24. Now, a lot of times uh, we learn best by making errors. And I wanna show you a mistake that happens a lot. A lot of students see a negative 15 here and a positive 15 here. And so when they go to do their division, uh, they wanna divide by positive eight. Now it's not wrong to divide by positive eight, but it will not solve your equation. Because if I divide by positive eight on both sides, and I can do that, it's not wrong to do that, it would give me negative one n is equal to three, which is true. It's just that I don't wanna solve for negative n, I want to solve for positive n. So I have to divide by negative 8. The opposite of multiplying by negative 8 is dividing by negative 8. And that gives me positive 1 when I divide negative 8 by negative 8. And on the other side, 24 divided by negative 8 is negative 3. So we put in answer. Now I've got uh, negative 16 minus 5x. Um, a lot of people have trouble with this. If I subtract, it's the same as adding negative 5x, and that is negative 21x plus negative 14 is equal to seven. Uh, I'm now going to do the opposite of adding negative 14, which is to add positive 14 and I get negative 21x is equal to 21. I'm going to divide by negative 21. And that gives me one x, or just simply x. One times x, is that one is really there, but it's just x equals 21 divided by negative 21 is negative one. This time, um, a lot of people have trouble when they have the variable on the right side of the equation. It's not wrong to change your equation the other way. If eight is equal to two times p plus one, then of course, two times p plus one is equal to eight. And reversing those is called the symmetric property of equality. It says that if I have a equals b or anything equals something else, then I can turn it around and it's still true. That's called the symmetric property of equality. I could or not, it's totally up to you. Uh, if it makes it easier for you, just rewrite it two times. P plus one is equal to eight. Now, can you think of the two ways to do this problem? One, one way is to just start doing the opposite to both sides in reverse order. And the reason you're allowed to do that is that you have a single P by itself. The other option is to distribute the two. I think more people would probably distribute the two because they wanna keep the same idea going all the time. So if you distribute your two to both parts, distribution is because this two is being multiplied by both of these. You have to make sure that you multiply the two by both. That is 2p plus 2 is equal to 8. And then we solve it by subtracting 2 and dividing by 2. We subtract 2 from both sides. 2p is equal to 6 and divide by 2. And of course, p is equal to 3. It's like we're getting a lot of 3s today. 
Uh, the other option was from the very beginning, I could have divided by two on both sides and gotten the P plus one is equal to four. And then subtract one and you get P equals three. It's not wrong to do it either way, it doesn't matter. Both, you could do it both ways and make sure you get the same answer twice. It's always good. But I need to get moving along. Now this is an interesting situation. Um, we've got Q minus 15 divided by two is equal to two. And in this particular case, you have a couple of options. Again, Q minus 15 divided by two is equal to two. Notice the last operation I mentioned was dividing by two. And there are assumed parentheses around these, this operation. That's why the division by two goes last. Uh, in order to undo dividing by two, we can multiply by two on both sides. What, and this is a two over one if that helps you to see it better. The twos simplify out and we have Q minus 15 is equal to four. And our last step is to do the opposite, add 15 to both sides. And we get our Q equals 19. A good idea occasionally, if you have a complex one and you're not absolutely sure you're right, is you can always substitute into the original since it says Q minus 15 divided by two is equal to two. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to substitute this Q into my original equation and it should still be true. Four over two is equal to two. So I can check it. So my answer is 19. Moving a bit slow, so I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. Uh, in this particular one, I could distribute my two but I'm going to simplify it by dividing by two on both sides and then subtracting two. If I divide by two, I get nine. And if I subtract two, I get seven. All I'm doing is doing the both sides two times. N plus two equals 18. I'm dividing both sides by two. N plus two is then equal to nine and subtracting two from both sides gives me seven. I'm gonna multiply by negative four on both sides and I'm just gonna do it in my head. I get G plus six. When I multiply both sides by negative four, I get negative eight and I'm going to add negative six. Uh, a lot of people wanna do subtract six and again, I've told you many times, subtraction is not commutative, and that gives you lots of problems later. So it's better to do addition, sorry, that's a G, not a Q, equals negative 14. And we're almost to the first uh, little ribbon. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative two and get t minus 11 is equal to 16. And then I'm gonna add 11 to both sides and get 27. What? What? What do I do? I'm a spaz. I don't know what I did, let me see divided by negative two. Oh my goodness gracious. And we should have gotten four and we should have added 11 and gotten 15. What did I get? Oops. I don't know what I was doing. What did I do? Oh, I multiplied by negative two. Oops. <laughs> uh, as you can see, it's a good idea to actually pay attention to what you're doing. And of course, you can always check your answer and see what, what happened. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to write down your work. Uh, 4C, that is 4C plus one is equal to 17. We're gonna subtract one from both sides and get 4C is equal to 16. What I'm gonna do is instead of always 
writing down my steps. I'm going to, I am going to write down what the result is. If I divide by four on both sides, I can see is equal to four. It makes it a little neater and occasionally, you know, it, you, hopefully you don't make an error like I did in the last one. Uh, let's do the next one. So I'm going to divide by two on both sides and get V minus two is equal to four and then add two to both sides and get V equals six. <laughs> Love it when you make a mistake. All right, 19 minus 19 R minus 16 R is three R. Minus three equals 18. We're gonna add three to both sides and get three R is equal to 21. And then we're gonna divide by three and get R equals seven. Remember, we're doing whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. This time, be careful. That, that N is on the right side this time, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna divide by two on both sides, and four divided by two is two, and the two cancels with the two on the top and gives me N plus four. And then I'm gonna to have to subtract four from both sides and go ahead and write it. And I get N is equal to negative two. This one has a double negative in it. See that double negative right there. I'm gonna do two simplifications to start with. I'm gonna take the 5n and the 9n and get 14n. And then it's gonna be plus 18. Because remember, a double negative, that double negative right here means subtract a negative is the same as adding a positive. And that is equal to negative 10. And I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides and get 14n is equal to negative 28, and I'm gonna divide by 14 and get n is equal to negative two. Now one of the things you might notice is that each time my problem seems to be working out to a nice whole number or an integer in this case, um, usually uh, it's going to be a, a number that doesn't work out evenly, but it's fine. Uh, if this had said 27, it would just be negative 27 over 14. Um, no matter what number you get here, if you divide by 14 on both sides, you're done. So this is negative two. This time we're gonna divide by two and add nine, which gives you 17. This one I need to simplify. So I've got a negative five N Oh, sorry, negative 5n plus 9n is equal to negative 4. And when you add those together, you get 4n is equal to negative 4. And now you can divide by 4, and you get n equals negative 1. I don't want to spend forever on this, so we're just going to move right along. When I multiply zero by negative three, I still just get zero. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative three. When I multiply, and I'll, I think I'm going to write it out because this one can get confusing for some people. When I multiply by negative three, it cancels with this negative three in the denominator. When I multiply by negative three, zero times negative three is zero. Now you're gonna be tempted to fill in the blank. You're gonna say, oh, in your head, you're gonna say, oh, 10 minus 10 is zero, so u is 10. That's true, but what you wanna do is always do the opposite, even when you're just thinking about it. Uh, so adding 10 to both sides gives you u equals 10. In this one, we're gonna multiply by negative two on both sides and we're gonna get eight equals T minus 11. And I'm gonna add 11 and get 19. Notice I'm adding, I, as I said, I'm gonna add 11 to both sides in my head. Of course, I'm just gonna add the 11 in my head. Eight plus 11 is 19. In this one, we've got three different uh, expressions involving N. I've got seven N, minus n, minus 5n. 
which is n. Seven n's, if you take away an n and then take away five more n's, you have one n left. You can do it in pieces or you can do it all together. And subtracting one gives you your 16. You have to subtract one from both sides. In this one, you're going to divide by two and then add nine and get 10. In this one, we're going to multiply by two and then we're going to add 2.5. Now this time we have some decimals. Some of you are, are going to be tempted to grab your calculator, but please don't do that. We've got J minus 2.5 divided by two is equal to nine. We're gonna multiply by two on both sides. And hopefully you can do it in your head. If not, you know, you can always do the multiplication on the side. But again, that's one of the reasons you have margins. Uh, 1.9 times 2 is 2 times 9 is 18, carry the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. We have one decimal place and you get the 3.8. I have J minus 2.5 is equal to 3.8 and we have to add 2.5 to both sides. Of course you have to line up your decimals. We have a little carry going on here. That is 13, carry the 1. And then 6.3 solution. This time we're going to divide by negative 3.06 and you're going to be very tempted to grab the calculator. But I want you to notice that that negative 6.12 is very similar to that 3.06, they it's double. There's something going on there. Now, notice if I had done this by distributing first, it would have made my, uh, I would have multiplied my effort exponentially because I would have had to multiply the negative 3.06 times the F, but also times the 19. Then I would have had to do a decimal uh, addition in this case and then I still would have had to do a decimal division. In this particular case, if I think about it a little bit, F plus 19 is equal to negative 6.12. Some people turn off their brain and just start distributing. But if you divide by negative 3.06, this number goes into this number two times. This number goes into this number one time. So I get F plus 19 equals two. Subtract 19 and you get negative 17. Well, they're really gonna make me work today. All right, this one I'm gonna multiply by negative four on both sides. And if you need to do the multiplication on the side, I'm just gonna do it in my head. N plus 6.3 is equal to 12.8, negative 12.8, excuse me. And then I'm gonna subtract 6.3 from both sides. And be careful, this is really adding a negative 6.3. And when you add negatives together, you always get a negative, and it's the sum of the negatives. We have negative 19.1. Finally, moving along now. We're going to multiply by three on both sides. And so we're going to have D plus 1.84. When I multiply by three, we're going to get 6.42. And we're going to have to subtract 1.84. I'm actually going to do the subtraction within this problem right there. I don't have to write it on the side. I can do the borrow right here. Borrow from the four. And I get eight. 8 from 13 is 5, decimals here, 5 minus 1 is 4, and that is our D. D equals 
You could grab a calculator, but I don't recommend it. It's always good to play with your decimals when you can. This one's kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna make a suggestion. I am gonna suggest that if I wanna get K by itself, I can literally do the opposite in reverse order instead of simplifying this side. Uh, simplifying this side would be a bit of a headache because I would have to multiply the 0.37 times K, the 0.37 times the nine, then I would have to simplify it more, then I could start solving. Instead of doing all that, I'm gonna solve from the very beginning by doing the opposite in reverse order. So take a look, get 0 0.37 times K plus five, nine. Even if I were using a calculator, this method is gonna be easier. So I'm gonna subtract 5.6. Notice that's the very last thing we did to this expression uh, was add the 5.6. So I'm gonna undo it by subtracting 5.6. That is 5.60 if that helps. And I'm going to do a subtraction, that's four. Six from 13 is uh, six from 13 is seven. 0 0.37 times k plus nine. Again, you're going to be tempted to distribute the 0.37 to both parts and you're gonna end up with multiplying the nine times the 0.37 and so on. But if you're learning your um, basic arithmetic and practicing it, you might have noticed that if I take 0 0.37, it happens to go into 0.74 exactly two times. And this goes in, 0.37 goes into 0.37 one time, and I get k plus nine is equal to, this is two. Um, one way to think of this is, instead of thinking of it as a decimal division, you can think of it as a fraction. You all learned how to simplify fractions. Watch this. Multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by 100, and you get 74 over 37. When you're doing decimal division and you're moving the decimals, that's really kind of what you're doing. I'm multiplying by 100 on the top and bottom and 74 divided by 37 is two. That is another way of simplifying decimal fractions. So this is two and we're gonna subtract nine from both sides and hopefully get your negative seven. And we're getting there. Uh, we're going to multiply by negative six, and should I do it in my head? Mm, probably not, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, that's going to give me 31.12. No, 31.32, I believe. Uh, I'm going to double check it. Uh, v minus 42.75. What I did was multiply by negative six on both sides. So I'm gonna do the 5.22, actually negative, times the negative six. Six times two is two, carry the one, that's three, carry the one, and that's 31. And the decimal moves two places, and the negative times the negative is a positive. So positive 31.32. I'm gonna add the 42.75. I think it's a good idea to practice your mental arithmetic. Mental juggling is always a good, good practice. Uh, that is seven, carry the one, that's four, and seven, so 74.07. Huh, a good looking answer there. Looks good. A couple more. Multiply by negative two, and I get 2.32. I'm just multiplying by negative two on both sides. If you need to, do it on the side. And that's n minus 17.38. And I'm going to add 17.38. I'm going to go ahead and write it down. And that gives you 19.7. If you like, 70, same thing, is equal to n. Do not have to put the zero. And we're going to do this last one. Hopefully this will be it. It's really going slow. Um, 
I suspect that 6.37 is going to go evenly into 76.44. This is one of the few cases where I would say, you know what, you could use a calculator, but I'm going to suggest that that may be 11 if you multiply it. Uh, nope, not going to work. Let's see, uh, 12 maybe? Yep, I'm suggesting, yeah. 12 times 6.37 is 7.44. So when I divide by the, when I divide by the 6.37 on both sides, I strongly suspect, oops, I strongly suspect that this is 12. And the way that you do decimal division, and it's always a good idea to do a little review on occasion of these kinds of things. I'm gonna put it into 76.44. Very scary proposition for a lot of people. Um, again, I'm moving the decimal two places, and I'm gonna move the decimal two places. So my decimal is actually here now, and the decimal goes straight up. What I did was I moved this decimal two places, and moved this this decimal two places. I'll make it a little bit more vivid here. And what you end up with is that means the same as 637 being divided into 764. It goes in one time. And seven from 14 is seven. And three uh, minus five is one, uh, two, sorry. And bring down the four. And 1274. Now it happens that 637 times 2 really is 1274. And when we subtract that, we get our zero remainder. And you subtract the 8 and you get the 4. Maybe one or two more. Multiply by 5 on both sides, and we get 18 is equal to B plus 38.8. I'm going to subtract 38.8 and get negative 20.8 is equal to B. I just subtracted 38.8. If you, or added a negative 38.8, if you want to do the work on the side, you certainly can. Negative 20.8. And it looks like we have one more. We're going to divide by 9.9, .9, which is going to give us 10, and S plus two is equal to 10. I just divided by 9.9. .9. Let me just show you something. 99 divided by 9.9. .9. And moving the decimal over one or multiplying by 10 gives us 990 divided by 99, which hopefully you can see is 10. Subtract the two and we get the eight. Uh, I hope that you'll practice your arithmetic. Man, that was a long one. Um, hopefully you can skip around and just go to the ones that you needed help with. So good luck, do some practice, and get your 100 medal, okay? And I'll see you back here again. Stop my recording.